TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right above me, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, this is where you can catch the highlights. Don't forget, we do got merch. You get me. Appreciate it. Got mine on. Uh, and we also got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday and stuff that cannot go on YouTube that we thought could also ends up here. The link to this is all down in the description below. It's under um, link tree. Click link tree and it'll all pop up. This is Hip Hop Daily. Central C vs. Diggity, the UK Drill War. And when I first started doing this and first heard these two, like I, I've said it way back, six, five, five, six years ago, that it was between one of them two that was going to break it in, the U, in America. One of these two is going to be at the top of the game. It turns out Central C, I mean, if we talking like plaques, I don't know, man. I'm just going to say it. Central C is, Digga D is still not far behind, but Central C has made it first. <laughs> Globally. But anyway, let's get to it, man. Central C broke out of the UK drill scene to become an international star. But most fans have no idea about his time in the streets or his violent beef with Digga D, another drill rapper who grew up five minutes away from him. From machete fights to prison stabbings, this is the shocking story behind their deadly beef. Central C. I feel like I ain't even gonna lie. Like I ain't never heard Central C being involved in any of any of any of anything. Like now his people being involved and people close to him and like family. That's 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 what I've heard. I ain't never heard him directly being involved. And that's salutable. That's how you want it to be. Don't nobody need to know what I'm doing. He and Digga D are both from London's West End in an area called Labra. Digga D spent his entire early life there, but Central C's family ended up moving five minutes away to a neighborhood called Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush and Labrook are two of the most violent areas in the West End. Labrook actually has a lot of wealthy people and nice homes though. It's a wild place because on one side of the street, you have families who can't afford food or keep the lights on, and right across from them, you'll see little kids with parents who buy them Rolexes. Back in the day, how, how is, <laughs> ain't nobody getting robbed left and right over there? That's tough. <laughs> both areas were under the umbrella of one gang called 916. It's not clear what went down behind the scenes, but at some point that You know what's crazy? On, um, in Chicago, like there's a, oh man, oh, I think Oak. Oak something. I can't. I ain't been over there in a minute, man. I used to mess with this girl that lived over there. I'm talking about. It was the end of the West Side, and then a, a suburb started. Like a nice suburb. I'm talking. It went from terrible to nice in one block, and the street was lined with police. There was nothing coming across there that wasn't supposed to be across there. Like it was. It was kind of like what they described beef and ended up splitting the hoods apart. The crew from Labrook became known as 1011 and the dudes in Shepherd's Bush started two new gangs called 12 World and 12 Anti. Even though they're technically two different sets, 12 World and 12 Anti are clicked up heavy and share the same ops. Central C and Digga D also went to the same school for a while, but they was a couple of years apart and Digga ended up getting kicked out pretty early after he got caught with weed. C was always surrounded by street activity, but he actually tried working a legit job before hopping off the porch. See, that's what C I'm started saying, working man. at a shoe store, but it ain't take long for him to realize that the real money was in the trenches. After just three weeks, he knew that working retail wasn't going to support the kind of lifestyle he wanted, so he bounced and started moving weight instead. Around the same time, C was already trying to make it in the music industry. He came up listening to reggae, dance hall, and American rap that his dad would play when he visited, and C started combining it all to try and find his own sound. Central C's dad's from America? I didn't know that. That's what it just made it sound like, at least. Digga D got an early start with rap too. His parents introduced him to a lot of Jamaican reggae, and Digga started writing his own music at around 12 years old. He didn't have a stable childhood at all though, and spent a lot of time at a place called the Herald Club. The Herald Club is a center for disadvantaged kids that's been around since 1883, and Digga says it was crazy important to him back in the day. When it was too cold to be outside and he didn't have anywhere to go, Digga and his homies would play football inside and started hanging out in the building's old recording studio. That's where he started laying down his first tracks. Around the same time, Digga suffered a tragic loss. When he was 11 years old, the grandma Digga lived with at the time suddenly passed away. He paid tribute to her on the track intro and rapped, Mom's life, I was 11 or 12, with half an M and some digital scales. Moved in with my nan, used to sneak in girls. 177 South Tram Crescent, my nan got cancer, I was 11. 
she passed away, know she went to heaven. She's on my mind, that's all through lessons. He dropped his first single just a couple years later, but it would take a while before he had any real success in the industry. Digga still had both feet in the trenches while he was working on his craft. Him and his 1011 homies was putting pressure on the ops in the streets and in the booth. One of their ops sets is a crew called Endgame, and in 2017, one of their affiliates was brutally stabbed to death in the middle of the day. Abdullahi Tarabi, aka T Wiz, was caught by two ops and stabbed twice. Oh my god. This is, we don't know very much about this. He ran away screaming for help while a bunch of horrified families watched it happen. Then he tragically collapsed around 100 yards away and died at the scene. Around 2016 and 2017, Digga and the rest of 1011 started dropping some of the most savage drill tracks in UK history. And on the song Kill Confirmed, Digga dissed T Wiz and his brother and rapped. If you run too slow, then you're pissed. We ain't touch no one from the end. Everyone knows that's Fibs. Young T Wiz got a chest shot. He just never died like his bro T Wiz. Digga was popping off like crazy and helped put UK Drill on the map. But instead of going all in with the music, he was still active in the streets. And at the end of 2017, he got locked up with a bunch of other 1011 affiliates. That's, that's the normal story, man. One foot in, one foot out. That one foot out is always going in. For allegedly planning an attack on 12 World. 1011 had beef with a few different sets on the West End, but they was always taking shots at dudes from Shepherd's Bush. The 1011 track next up went viral like crazy and racked up over a million streams in under a couple of weeks. This, 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 I feel like this still is the hardest next up. I ain't heard nothing really come close to this next up. Like when the, when you, it, it be like you want this to happen on your platform, but then when it happened, it's like, dang, it ain't gonna never, like nothing will ever be this great again. <laughs> And on the track, Digga's homie Savo raps. How successful would your business? How many times have I read on Bush? Like one of them boys gotta go. Back out my ting and make man swim. Like Ching Man down on votes. Catch me an op and stab up his head. Then ten toes back to the grove. The cops found Digga and his homies on their way to 12 World Territory carrying baseball bats and machetes and booked them on conspiracy to commit violent disorder. They all tried to claim they were just shooting a music video, but the cops didn't buy it and Digga got hit with the one year sentence. Getting locked up right when the music was gaining traction was bad, but the situation had way more consequences than anyone expected. While he was- I ain't gonna lie, getting locked up and then him coming out and him being on remand and having to like T having to watch what he says so having to think more about what he raps about like it helped his rap though like, it really did help his rap and the words he be using and the creativity of his rap it helped he was in court the cops started taking a closer look at Digga's music videos and lyrics and realized 1011 was talking about real life situations in their tracks they thought the music might lead to more violence in the streets so they hit Digga with a criminal behavior order and required him to get permission from the police to release new music yeah, that banned him from talking about specific that helped his artistry I feel the areas of London and banned him from referencing any real crimes or the people involved with them Plus, four of 1011's music videos were taken off of YouTube by the police. The best four. They had already run up huge numbers and were building a worldwide audience through their music videos. But the cops put a massive hurdle in front of them when they took the videos down. If Digga put out any music that the cops thought broke the CBO, they could take them right back to prison and there was nothing. And you know what's crazy, man? I feel like somebody else made a point on this, I think. They said most of the videos that get taken down are the ones that are doing numbers that are not even that negative. There's more negative songs that the police let slide because they're not doing numbers. I think that yeah, they made a good point to that, man. Anything that's doing numbers, you can't mention nothing. Nothing he could do about it. Anti-censorship groups came out to fight for Digger's freedom from the CBO, but none of it worked. And he had to learn how to make drill music under the crazy rules they put on him. It helped While him. While Digger and 1011 was paving a new lane in UK drill, Central C was working on his own craft. He hopped on the track Ain't Nothing Remix with Jay Hugh back in 2015, which led to him getting a feature with Dave. Dave is one of the hottest UK rappers in the world right now, but back then he was still underground, so Central Dave, Dave put me on the UK rap. Central C didn't get a lot of shine from working with him. Back then, the Central C black. was rapping with Autotune and making pretty generic trap songs. He dropped his first single in 2016 and followed it up with two projects in 2017, but none of it made much of an impact in the UK drill scene. While he was trying to get the music popping, C was still in the streets though. 
And in 2018, the beef between him and Digga D almost took a deadly turn. In 2018, Digga came back home after serving time for allegedly planning the attack on 12 World. He wasn't gonna just keep his head down and focus on the music though. And in November, he allegedly caught Central C and his brother on the street. On November 30th, 2018, Central C was with his little brother and some of their homies on the block when Digga D and one of his people pulled up on them and started some kind of argument. It's not clear what the situation was really about, but it got so heated that Digga allegedly pulled out a blade and stabbed Central C's brother. Digga and the other dude were both arrested and went back to prison for violating his criminal behavior order. The charges ended up getting dropped, but Digga still had to deal with some life-changing consequences over it. While he was back on the inside, someone attacked Digga with a blade they made out of a tuna can and stabbed him in the eye. He said it almost turned deadly. Blood was shed. That's why they can never come back from this. Which I understand. That's that's how the streets go. Once blood is shed, ain't no really ain't no bygones could be bygones. It's not gonna move like that. But it's unfortunate that these two beef, man, because if they drop a song together, it's probably gonna be the biggest song in the UK has ever seen. Digga lost vision in the eye, and his lawyer said he was dealing with PTSD over the situation. He still wasn't allowed to speak on any real life violence in his music, but last year, Digga allegedly admitted to stabbing Central C's brother on a leaked track where he raps, Who the fuck is Central C? The only wilds in West is me. We shoved his brother, went to jail, but still took the not guilty plea. And on another leak, he said, Don't compare me to Central C. He just stood there and watched when we chinged his brother. I went to jail for that little fucker. I still came home to the nicest supper. Central C. Yeah, see, ain't no coming back. Clapped back on the track, cold shoulder, and raps. Last time I let that slide, but this time I ain't gonna let that run. They made a diss track. That shit was too whack to get a response. It's sad, cat. I love my hood where I'm from, but that place ain't where I belong. Then he took it a step further on the track, ended up beginning, and said, See the way I chop it? Would have thought I had a black belt. I don't even need practice. I'm a natural. I want to hit Tennessee and don't mean Nashville. The line was about a model that Digga D used to date named Tennessee Thresher. Obviously, the diss ain't having to press that. though, because Digga just tweeted, rapping about 10, that's your way of payback? Damn, little bro. Digga D and Central C were already ops because of the crews they rep. But there's another reason Digga has issues with them. Since at least 2018, Digga has been sending shots back and forth with another rapper named Fredo. Oh, it's yeah. not clear where it all started, but one time Fredo went on Instagram Live and said that he's not making music with anyone from Labrook Grove. I'm not making songs for Labrook Grove, but they're not Grove. Later, Digga was on Live when someone started playing a track from Fredo and Day. Digga made it clear that he wasn't rocking with either one of them and said to turn it off. See what I'm saying? Oh, I'm gonna turn this shit off, man. Then after the news broke that Digga... See, that's what I'm saying, man. Just imagine. Dave, Fredo, Digga D, Central C on one track. Stop it. <laughs> Digga got stabbed in jail. A UK rap page put up a post wishing him well. And Fredo sent a sneak diss by commenting an ambulance emoji. Central C linking up with Fredo and Dave negative. could be one reason that Digga has so much beef with him. But some fans think it all comes from jealousy. Central C has been in the game almost as long as Digga. But it took him a lot longer to pop off. By 2020, Digga already had millions of streams and a big name in the industry, but Central C was still pretty much underground. He even thought about giving up on rap and going a different way, but then he switched up his style and everything changed. In 2020, That's Central C dropped the auto tune. Sometimes, man, you just switch up your way of delivering, switch up how you sing, and boom. Trap style and went all in with Drill on the track Day in the Life. It was clear from the jump that he made the right move changing styles. The track popped off and ran up over 70 million views on YouTube. And overnight, Central C was becoming the face of the UK drill scene. C wasn't just blowing up in the rap game though. One thing that really pushed him to the next level was when he linked up with a streetwear company called Trapstar. Trapstar is kind of like- I, I just could never wear a Trapstar in my life. The logo, it's the logo for me. From where I'm from, I can't do it, man. It's Supreme, but based out of London. And the hype around the brand is crazy. While C was promoting his debut mixtape, Wild so, West, they designed the official merch and put an even bigger spotlight on him. Wild West came out at number two on a UK albums chart and shot C straight into the mainstream. Drake co-signed him and even gave C his first modeling job for his Nike clothing line. C kept it pushing and dropped more hits like Obsessed With You and Retail Therapy, then leveled up again with the track Doja. He linked up with Cole Bennett for the music video and hit over half a billion streams on Spotify. I ain't gonna lie, he made the right moves though. He went kinda not, not pop. But he went like radio, and hey, dude, that's what you do when you get that. When you get once that door open, make them radio hits, man. 
And by the end of 2022, he had become the first UK well, rapper like to run up over a billion sure. streams in one year. 2023 has been even crazier for him. He linked up with Dave again for the track Sprinter. And this time, they were both already at the top of the game. Sprinter was a single for their collab tape, Split Decision. And the track ended up breaking the record for the longest running number one rap song in UK history. Then Double XL added seed to the 2023 freshman class. And Drake linked up with him for his on the radar freestyle too. Central C didn't just take over UK drill, so he's becoming an style. international star with fans all over the world. Digga D definitely helped pave the way for him to come through, but he's had a tough time staying out of trouble. 2020 was when Central C got his name buzzing, and that same year, Digga D It's crazy because Digga D is like one move away from being on the same strat, like same, you know what I'm saying? Worldwide type D thing. pleaded guilty to a charge of violent disorder and got hit with a two year and six month sentence. The charge came after he was involved with the wild machete fight in front of a bunch of civilians outside of a shopping center. His homie Sal Lowe oh, okay. went down for the situation too and took a three year sentence. Digger got off easy and was back home by 2021. Yeah, okay. He still had a lot of buzz on his name thanks to tracks like No Diet, which hit over 30 million views on YouTube, plus a bunch of viral freestyles. But it wasn't long before he was right back in handcuffs. In July 2021, he was arrested after going to a Black Lives Matter protest and posting about it on Instagram. They booked him for inciting violence just for holding up a sign of the protest. And fans gotta know better than that, though. And jumped in immediately to call the police out for trying to censor him. Luckily, he was released. But just a few months later, rumors started flying that Digga had been arrested in Dubai for stabbing someone. Nobody knows what really went down over there, but Digga hopped on social media to squash the rumors. He said that he had been arrested and questioned, but that he didn't hurt anyone. What's crazy about the situation is that all of the legal drama hasn't even slowed Digga down. Last year, he dropped his third mixtape and debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart. And in September 2022, he launched his own label, Black Money Records. Digga is definitely more known for crashing out and getting arrested, but it seems like he's really trying to turn it all around and help keep other kids from falling into the street life. In an interview with The Guardian, he talks about how he understands the influence he has on kids from London and needs to think more before he speaks. He's also getting act. Digga D is still a kid. Like, not a kid, but like, he's in a, like, I don't know, he's still pretty young. So, to put that much responsibility on him, that's crazy. In his old community and went back to the Herald Club to hand out. But with great power comes great responsibility, you know, Peter Parker type vibes. Out clothes and food to kids who need it. He just dropped his newest project a couple of weeks ago, and on the track Fighting For My Soul, Digga addressed how he had to switch everything up to make it farther and rapped. God gave me life, so I can't tell him I'm suicidal. It's been rewritten, but I still find a time to read the Bible. I'm a rapper, that's my title, someone's idol. So I'm mindful when I talk, cause if not, they'll cancel me to be spiteful. It's all a cycle. The war between Shepherds Bush and Labbrook led to a lot of violence and kept Digger behind bars when he could have been performing shows and dropping more music. But somehow, him and Central C both survived and made it out on top. They'll probably never be cool with each other cause there's too much history between them and their crews. But for right now, it looks like the beef is cooling off while they focus on their own careers. Yeah, that, that's you and wishful thinking. Beef don't never cool off, man. It just, it just, you know, gets put to the side for the moment. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. Let me know what y'all think.